especially because Jim's been always very forthcoming with his information about Bob. We rounded third. We're heading for home tonight on Spaced Out Radio. My name is Dave Scott. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us. Really do appreciate earning your listening ears wherever you are on this beautiful planet we call Earth. Want to remind you that if you've missed most of this show or others, check out our free archives by going to youtube.com forward slash Spaced Out Radio. Do me the favor, hit that subscribe button, our website is spacedoutradio.com, where we have a plethora of features for you, including rocking out to Bumblefoot and reading up on Captain Shirk's SOR Newswire. Follow us on Twitter at Spaced Out Radio and on Instagram, Spaced Out Radio Show. It's time for the Unbiased UFO Report. Yes, this is where we are joined by our resident UFO researcher, John Hudson, to come on in and discuss everything that is going on in the UFO world. And one of the things that I want to get to right off the bat, Daniel Sheehan making a little bit of news here once again, John, talking about a Mach 12 aircraft. Yeah, so, um, you know, I, this is one of those things that if, if you don't listen to all of his interviews very carefully, he, he loves to drop these little nuggets that um, are really quite shocking if you know the history. And, um, you know, uh, one of them is that he was temporarily given a queue clearance by a judge once, which is completely unheard of in my knowledge. But the bigger one is, is this Mach 12 plane. And it was during one of his um, uh, times he came on with... Um, I believe it was um, a Grant Cameron uh, or I think it's actually under Gary Voorhees' channel where they did a panel and he came on and he was talking about how he was learning about different programs, uh, partly because he wanted to find out whether any of them came close to any of the capabilities we were seeing in the skies. And one of the things he claimed point blank that he was briefed on was a crazy Mach 12 plane. And the thing I found interesting about this is that Mr. Sheehan's not a technical man. And so when he gives technical details, it's usually because he's repeating what he heard. And what he specifically said was that that plane reached supersonic speeds and then it releases a rare gas into the outside air of the plane, which is then detonated by the shock waves that are shaped specifically to then propel that plane to Mach 12. And that as a result of being able to fly Mach 12, it can basically lay all of its nuclear arsenal across the surface level of a country like Russia in about two minutes. Wow. Uh, by my calculations, it can be anywhere in the world. It can leave the United States, be anywhere in the world within 90 minutes. And he claims that he saw pictures of the plane and he was briefed on the plane by someone official blew my mind where do you think this aircraft is based out of oh you know i never understand why people have have trouble uh, like um uh, guessing on that like the united states has i think we i think we have more bases outside of the u.s than most other countries have bases inside their own countries um we have we have bases everywhere i mean just diego garcia alone uh, all the DOE, si DOE sites where they bury all the nuclear uh, waste, you could stick a, a whole fleet of planes in those in those you know underground areas. There's so many places you could hide these planes, especially if you can go Mach 12. So it doesn't care. You don't care where it launches from. It could be launching from anywhere and still get to its target within 90 minutes. I'm just trying to figure out exactly what a couple of our listeners have said in the chat room. How does anybody survive flying at Mach 12? Well, um, what's interesting is what you would need is you would need an inertial mass reduction device, which, as a side note, is exactly one of Payas's patents that everyone likes to poke at. Um, as, a, as a side note to our, our previous conversation with Jim, another one of, of Payas's patents is on a compact fusion reactor which is an improvement on Lockheed's design, 
which has gotten all sorts of positive feedback and acclades. And that patent is very well respected and I believe works into the program that Jim was talking about. Incredible. Incredible. Nothing to do with the Aurora, a completely different new aircraft. Well, this is the question. And, and that's the other thing that, that one of these days I'm going to ask Jim about because an MOD uh, release was given a, a couple months ago where they showed pictures of that triangle craft, the same one that um, Nick Pope claimed he had a poster of in his office that disappeared. And in the document that surfaced, they specifically mentioned the Aurora program as being one of the projects that is marked for non-conversation, non-dissemination, non—you know—repeating within their within their world. Um, I forget the—they have a technical term for it. It's something I think Delta Twelve or something like that. I forget the exact term. It's in the document I sent you, and they basically said point blank that that there is a plane called Aurora that is marked you know, U.S. top secret that no one's allowed to talk about. And in that same folder was a photocopy of that triangle craft that was on Nick Pope's wall. So that implies that that plane is Aurora. Now, we didn't see the plane that, that Danny Sheehan uh, saw, but he did say it didn't look like a plane. It looked very, very weird. And so it's possible that, that the plane Danny Sheehan was talking about and the Aurora are the same thing because it is somewhat unlikely that you would have two completely different Mach 12 programs. Unbelievable. I mean, can you imagine, and I want to believe this so bad, John, but can you imagine if this was 100% true, that it was out there in the public? Wow. Oh, I, mean, I Actually, I'll be honest with you. I personally, I... I don't believe that what I, I believe what Danny Sheehan said, because my understanding is, is that he received that information um, in a somewhat um, a, a, he didn't say this specifically, but the way he told the story, I got the impression he got this information in, in, in the pursuit of his job, like in a case he was working on. And so um, and they, it was offered to him. It, it wasn't something he poked at. It, it was they, it was said, you know, oh, well, this is one thing we have we can share with you. Right. And so is it possible that, that they were lying to him? Sure. Absolutely. Right. But those are some weird specific details to give a, a lawyer. Right. Releasing a rare gas into a formed shockwave. I mean, how does the plane even survive the detonation of the gas, let alone the pilot inside? And why even have a pilot? You couldn't see anything anyway. Going Mark 12, you're not going to be able to see anything. The, the world's going to be going by so fast that, I mean, it, it'll be, you'll be like that, the, that, that, Quicksilver character, you know, I mean, it, it's, it's, it would be insane. I don't Let even know how to think about that. Don't even know how to think about that. Let's move on to our next topic here tonight on the unbiased UFO report. JJ Abrams, who's known for Star Trek and Star Wars seven and nine has got a brand new four port UFO show on Showtime. Tell us about it. Yeah, so um, a couple of us heard rumors about this. Um, so it wasn't a total shock, but um, the fact that it's so far along, at least was was shocking to me. There's a, a trailer out that you can watch. Um, and uh, and I am I believe, um, you know, I don't remember off the top of my head exactly when they said it, it's going to be released, but it's going to be soon. And essentially it's going to be on Showtime only. Um, so it is part of his contract that he has with... Um, um, uh, with, uh, I think it was Warner was who he signed the contract with. Um, and, uh, essentially it's going to be a four part. And what's interesting is that his work is more of a standard documentary. Whereas the, the other big project that HBO is doing, that is going to be a, a fictionalization of the story where they're going to tell the story of Christopher Mellon, Louis Elizondo, uh, Leslie Keen, um, probably Ralph Blumenthal, a couple others, and, and they're going to actually stitch it together as a, as a story and try to tell the story of, of what happened. But our understanding is that they're going to use actors and it's going to be fictionalized. Whereas what Abrams is doing is more of a classical documentary, but done with his, with his level of, of gravitas, you know, his level of, of finesse. I did see one of the previews and it involved Kevin Day yep. and, and Gary Voorhees. Yep. who uh, Kevin Day and Gary Voorhees were both on the USS Nimitz back in 2004. And it was Kevin Day who actually called on the jet fighter pilots like Alex Dietrich 
and David Fravor to yep. go intercept the Tic Tac aircraft. And Kevin is still a little messed up over that. And I, and I don't say that to, to be, you know, trite about him or anything like that. But oh, no. this, this has affected him big time. No, it's, it's an important thing to point out because it has, and he handles it very well, and he has nothing to be ashamed of. What he went through, especially from where he came from, would do this to, would, would actually do much worse to most people than what it's done to him. But it's important to point out what it has done to him because it helps all of us empathize with other experiencers. So, what do we expect from this? Are we going to see the same talking heads? you know, saying a bunch of nothing, because usually what happens when somebody steps into the UFO world, they don't bring in a lot of new voices or new faces. They always bring in the same faces every time, whether it's Nick Pope or Richard Dolan and, and nothing against those people, but you know, there's not a lot of fresh blood in there. Yep. No, no. And, and, and I think, I think there's a good chance that the, the way Abrams looks at it is that um, he's breaking that mold by essentially bringing in Kevin Day and, and, and Voorhees and, and, and others who, you know, um, you know, are not, you know, classically major players in, in the UFO community. Um, you know, I don't know. I mean, my challenge with it is, is it even like, let's say he got some original footage, right? I mean, he's got connections. I mean, who knows, right? So let's say he gets some original footage and he shows it. Who's going to believe it? This guy made Star Wars and he made S Star Trek, right? I mean, it's like this guy's good at, at, at creating fantasy on, on the screen. So um, I really don't know if it's going to have the same kind of weight that it would by someone else. So I think ultimately it's going to be a very pretty package. It's going to be the... Um, you know, it's going to be the 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 the, the BMW, the the you know the, the Mercedes class product for people that want to consume what we've been consuming for the last five years, but consume it in a very nice, very clean, very pretty package, which is important for a certain part of the market. Right. And of course, I, I'm assuming we're going to be able to see that Luis Elizondo, Chris Mellon, and Leslie Keen are going to be working on something as well. Well, my understanding is that they're that they are being they're, they're being sourced for the HBO for the HBO project. But I also think it's a really important thing to to note that HBO announced their product uh, their project a couple months ago, and now Showtime's announcing theirs. What this says to me is UFOs have become a hot enough commodity that the the studios are now feeling pressure to have their own projects, and that's a statement about how things are progressing in a big way. No, I think that's very good. And and to kick off the week, we have a big, big press conference that's going to be happening by um, a multi-million dollar program to search for alien techno, techno signatures and biosignatures. What's this all about? Yeah, so this one this one caught me off guard, and um, although I think it was supposed to, and um, you know the 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 kind of money they're talking about, I I have to guess that um, that that um, that uh, famous Russian um, uh, uh, individual Yuri. Um, oh, I apologize, I can't remember Yuri's last name, but he's the one that was helping funding the breakthrough project. Um, uh, where they were sending the little cube sats um, out. Um, he he has a huge passion for for tech. I mean, for 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 you know alien type you know uh, off world stuff. And so my guess is that he's involved. Though I don't know that for sure. But basically, it's not like an award thing. It's not like a contest. It's basically the announcement of a of a very very large funding engine for different research groups who are looking specifically for techno signatures and bio signatures looking for proof of alien life awesome john we will talk to you next time on the unbiased ufo report another great uh set of stories that you've got for us keeping us all up to date here on spaced out radio and the latest ufo news you're hitting home runs here my friend keep it on up thank you sir you have a good weekend all right let's get to captain shirk's sor news